Hello, this is Tim Erickson, St. Paul Tim, here with the latest uh, Simplo video on Backdrop CMS. And today we are going to talk about uh, the layouts, uh, layouts in Backdrop CMS. For those of you who might be coming from Drupal 7, um, layouts are a pretty major change from, uh, from Drupal 7 and something that, uh, for me at least, took the most to wrap my head around. It's the biggest different sort of new feature built into Backdrop CMS. Uh, again, for those coming from Drupal 7, um, think about layouts as sort of an alternative to panels or the display suite mo module. These are, uh, this, this is a feature that allows you to position uh, content uh, on your page in different ways. And it's pretty powerful. Uh, some of it, uh, its power is a little bit hidden and we need to help make, expose it. For those of you who are not from Drupal, uh, don't worry about anything I just said. Um, the rest will all become clear in a minute. So when we're talking about uh, layouts, uh, we have two different, uh, a couple of terms to think about. One is uh, the, the, the distinguish between a layout and a layout template. So a template uh, is, uh, as it sounds, sort of a general structure. It's a collection of regions uh, that you can base a layout on. So uh, different layout templates will have different assortments of regions and different patterns. They might have a, uh, a footer and a bottom region. They might have a left sidebar instead of a right sidebar. They might have another region about between the header and the top. Each one of those would be a layout template. And you can take the same template uh, layout template and make two different layouts, right? So on the, uh, let me see if I can shrink this just a little bit. There we go. On the uh, left side here, we have a front page layout. And on the right side, we have a blog page layout. Both of these layouts use the same layout template, right? They both have the same rough regions and the same rough patterns. But on the front page layout, uh, in, in between the two different layouts, we have the same thing in the top. But you'll notice this uh, sort of header region um, for the front page it has special announcements. And on the blog page, that's where you put your breadcrumbs. On the front page, that's where you put your teasers and uh, blog posts. And a teaser is just a short snippet uh, uh, about your blog post that will lead the reader to click on it and read the entire blog post. And maybe in the right sidebar is some upcoming events, whereas for on individual blog post pages, um, this region might have your date, uh, body field, and a photo. And uh, the right sidebar might be used for things like content tags, uh, related links to related content, uh, information about the author. And then maybe the footer is the same on both of those pages. So again, we have the same layout template here, two different layouts. Um, let's jump here to a backdrop site to take a look at how this works. And this is a, a plain vanilla backdrop CMS site with one exception. We have added just some, some simple uh, content uh, from Wikipedia, uh, some different animals, some posts, so that we have a little bit something to look at and work with. Where you're going to find your layouts is in under the structure menu down here uh, click on layouts. Okay, once we get to the layouts page, we're going to find that, that uh, by default, Backdrop comes with four enabled layouts. Uh, the first one is the layout being used for the dashboard. The second one is the layout being used for the home page. Uh, Backdrop has a separate a home page layout than it does for all the other pages, which would be the default layout. And then it also has a special layout for uh, administrative pages. Uh, these are not front front end users aren't going to see that. One of the most important things to understand about this page is that when Backdrop goes to render or display any page on the site, it decides uh, which layout to use based on working from top to bottom on this page. So the first thing it's going to do is check to see is this uh, a dashboard page? If it's not the dashboard, it's going to move on to the next layout. It's going to say, is this the home page? If it's not the home page, it's going to move on and say, OK, well, we'll use the default layout. If it had been either the dashboard or the home page, it would have stopped and used that appropriate layout. 
Uh, other things we have on the uh, uh, layouts page here are the ability to install new layouts. Uh, there are contributed layouts that you can download at backdropcms.org, and you can see them here. Um, we can uh, look to see if any, uh, just like modules or themes can be updated, so can layouts. So if there are updates available for any of your layouts, this is where you'd find out about that. And finally, uh, the, the templates page. These are the layout templates that are uh, active on your site. And this is actually one other difference in this installation. This installation of Backdrop has a bunch, has more layout templates available than you would normally get with Backdrop Core. Backdrop Core, I think, comes with about 10 or 12 layouts. We've got a, a few more here. And all of the layouts uh, on this site are all enabled. Uh, one of the things on this page that you can do is disable certain layouts, such that if you're giving um, your site editor, your editors, the ability to create new layouts, you can you can give them a choice of say just the th these three uh, top layouts, uh, the Boxton, Boxton Full, Boxton Hero, or we could decide to give Boxton Full and Geary Full, that those are the two layouts we want to make available to our editors. So we could disable all of the other layouts. I'm not going to actually do that right now, but you can play with that later yourself. The point being, you you. you probably don't need all of these layouts on an active site and it would probably make sense to go ahead and disable or remove some of these contributed layouts that you're not using. Okay let's go back to the list layouts page and as we recall the top layout there was the dashboard layout and the dashboard is a good thing to look at to get a sense of how layouts work because uh, basically the dashboard is a collection of blo blocks with um, uh, content or links that are useful to a site editor or administrator. And the way uh, these blocks are organized is a, a layout. We have a, uh, a full width region here with a block in it, and then we have two columns, excuse me, with blocks on the left and blocks on the right. Uh, I know that there is a footer region, but apparently there's no comment or content in it for this layout right now. If we uh, want to see what this looks like in the layout menu, we can come back here and we can click on the, uh, if we scoot over here though and we go under configure layout, uh, this is where you decide uh, which particular layout you want to use on your dashboard. And if we click on the manage blocks, uh, we get here, here we can actually see each of the regions. There's three full width regions, a header region, a top region, and a content region. Then we have two column regions, a first half and a second half, and we have a bottom and a footer. And as we noticed before, the bottom and the footer are empty, so is the content region. Uh, empty regions in layouts just don't display on your page uh, generally. Um, but uh, within now this layout, we can move things around. So for example, uh, the Backdrop News uh, uh, block, which is news from backdropcms.org, might be something you really want to keep on your site, but you don't want to use this real estate in this. So you can just sort of drag this maybe down into the bottom. Uh, we can save the layout. We go back to the dashboard. And now we'll notice this is where the Backdrop News was. And now it's down here. It's uh, stretched itself across the page because it can. Uh, maybe we want the up, uh, available uh, updates layout to be uh, more prominent up here at the top. So again, we can go back to the layouts page. We can scoot over here and go directly to the dashboard layout. That's a little shortcut. And we can again scroll down here. There's the available layout. So we can just drag and drop that up here to the right, put it up on the top, hit save. Okay, and now we go to the dashboard page, and now that available updates block is here. Uh, so maybe we don't even want this available updates uh, 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 block. So what we can do is just remove that block. That block will still be available to us if we want to bring it back and put it in the layout. Like, But now we can save this, and now the uh, available updates block is completely gone. Again, that might be true of even this uh, welcome to backdrop. This is a block that's really useful for to, to a new user, but over time you might decide you just don't need that block anymore, 
and you want to save the space. So again, we go to our layouts, go to the dashboard, and we can just disable the welcome to backdrop, remove that. The block's always still available. If you want to add it back, you can go to add block and go dashboard. Oh, excuse me, uh, welcome with the welcome to back, and you can add it back. Uh, I'm going to not add it back right now, so we've actually got rid of it. Save. Now we go to the dashboard, and that, that big welcome block is gone, and we jump right into our content. And our backdrop news is down here at the bottom out of the way. Okay, so that's a good example of how we can move layouts on a really simple page. Uh, let's go to the front uh, of the website, and we can see that the layout for this page uh, is pretty simple. Uh, we've got a couple of regions. We have a, a region up here that has the navigation and the, the uh, site name in it. We have a hero region with this uh, uh, textured background in it. Uh, both of those go all the way across the page, and so does this. Uh, it, this might look a little bit like a two-column uh, layout, but we can tell that actually it's not because the content over on the right side isn't really lining up in a layout. Uh, this is actually just one wide column uh, with uh, teasers or our articles, and these uh, teasers stretch all the way across. Within each one of these, uh, we have uh, uh, some text on the left and a picture on the right, but it's just one uh, wide article. And we also have a footer region. We may also have some other regions that aren't displaying because they don't have any content. And we can find out exactly what our front page looks out. If we go layout, home page, here it is. So we've got two blocks, a header block and a, a primary navigation block in our header. Then we have the uh, this hero block, which has the welcome to Simplo, uh, hero region, which has the welcome to Simplo block. Uh, we have a promoted content, uh, and, and this is, promoted content are the, the blog post teasers that we have on the front page, or the animal uh, teasers, and then we have a block down here in the footer. Uh, the other layout that we're using, the other layout that we're using is the default layout, and this, if we look at this, actually does have uh, a sidebar in one point. Uh, but otherwise, the header, the uh, the top content, bottom and footer. So in this one place, we have two we have two regions, and we'll take a look at how this works. A couple of things to note here. Uh, one of which is there is this uh, the page title. The page title uh, shows up in this default spot. We can actually move that around and create a block instead of that, and we'll do that in a minute. Um, Okay, so let's take a look at one of the, uh, the, the pages that uses this template. If we go to the home page, and we click on the giraffe, it's going to take us to the node page. Uh, and nodes, uh, nodes in Drupal or Backdrop are just uh, individual pieces of content, like an individual article. Uh, this individual article uh, has a big picture at the top and the body. There, we can see that there's an extra column here, a region that's not being used, and we'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, the page title is up here at the top, right above these tabs, and the breadcrumbs. This is something that I find a little bit unusual, the way the breadcrumbs show up out of the, deep, the, uh, deep, the box down here. So let's take a look and move some of these things around. And uh, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to move the breadcrumbs up to the top, also these tabs. And uh, just as an example, I'm going to move the, the, the title, the page title, over in this column and just show you how we can do that. Uh, we can go to our default layout. There it is. And uh, what I want to do is, so I'm actually not going to move, well, there's two things. Those, those tabs and the page title right now are both above the breadcrumbs, and I don't really want them up there. Um, what, I, what I'm going to do to get them uh, below the breadcrumbs is actually add blocks below here. There is, we can go into the sidebar here. I said I would put the title over there, and if we type title, 
there's a page title block that's available to us. And if I click on that and enable that block, you might have noticed that the the title, that little title region that was kind of st st stood alone by itself, that just went away. So what we've done is we've overruled that, the, 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 this hard-coded place where the title would go, and we've replaced that with a title block that appears over here. Um, there's a similar thing with the tabs. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Okay, let's go back to the that article page. There we go. So we moved the giraffe, the page title over here. It's kind of an odd space, but it demonstrates what we want to demonstrate. So the other thing is we have this sort of view and edit, and I kind of feel like that should be below the breadcrumbs. So let's go back once again to our layouts, the default layout. And once again, we can go into this content region, which is below the breadcrumbs, and we can start typing tabs. And there's a block called page tabs. And the page tabs were showing up in kind of a default place. It didn't show, you couldn't actually see where they were. I'm just going to go ahead and add that. You couldn't see where they were. They were above the breadcrumbs. There was nothing to, to show that here. But as soon as I add the page tabs down here, they'll no longer display up there. Now what I want to do is also move it above the main, the main page content. So now the page tabs are between the breadcrumbs and the main page content. We're going to save this. There we go. Now we have our breadcrumbs at the top. We have our tabs uh, below that. We have our page title kind of off here on the side. And here's our main page content. Okay. Uh, all very nice. Let's go back and say that we want uh, a different layout. So this, this is our default layout that's going to be for all content. Uh, basically for all content except the home page right now. But let's say we decided that we wanted um, a special layout for these animal, uh, uh, these articles. And we have a content type called animals. Uh, that's just a type of content in our site. And we want to lay these pages out differently than other pages are laid out. So we go to the layouts. And on the layouts page, we're going to say, let's add a layout. And we're going to call this animals. Uh, and we pick which layout we want. And the main thing we're looking at, a couple of things, which we're looking for a layout if we need a hero region. And a hero region is just a region that stretches all the way across the page. If you want to do a background image that stretches from side to side, you're going to need a hero region to put that in. Um, if we're also, do we want any columns, right? Um, let's say this time, we want to use, uh, we want a column, but we want it on the left, or, uh, excuse me, yes, the left side instead of the right. So I'm going to look at um, the Moscone um, layout here. That gives me two regions at the top, a left sidebar, a main body, and two sort of footer regions. So I'm going to pick that one for our animals. We have to select one. Uh, we also have to say then, what is the path that we want to use for this? And if we're doing this for some kind of node, we're going to use some wild cards and say we, we want to use this on, on for nodes. This is just to show up on nodes. We could hard code a path here. If we wanted a, a layout for a very specific path, we could do, do that. Um, or we can do, do the wild card, and that is to say that we'll use this layout for any node with any title, except that we only want this to appear for animal, uh, the animal content type. We don't want this to appear for blog pages or other articles. So what we do is come down here to, to the visibility uh, condition, and we can pick specific conditions, like we could say only use this on the front page, only use it for certain site languages, only use it on a specific path or for a specific permission, uh, a, a specific node ID, or in this case a node type. A node type would be the animals. There's uh, two other possibilities would be for one specific user account. They could have their own layout or for any user of a certain role. Uh, we're going to do this node type. And again, nodes are, and, and it says, so which type of node or which type of content do we want to use this for? Animals, pages, or posts? We're going to say animals. Add a visibility condition. And now we're going to save this. Uh, let's go back to our, oh, uh, 
maybe we, if it's not too late, let me stop this. Before we go on, we'll notice that it automatically placed uh, our, our, all of our blocks into the region that it thinks is most appropriate. There are some circumstances where uh, the regions aren't named very uh, consistently, especially if you've created your own layout and you upload it and you haven't sort of used the same naming scheme. These blocks may get uh, shuffled around or all dumped into one re region and then you have to distribute them. But in this case, it did a pretty good job. It put everything roughly where we want it. Uh, but we're going to do a couple of other things uh, with this. I want to also go back to the layouts page. There we are and notice uh, where this showed up. So now this is showing up on the layouts page between the home page and the default. So now as uh, Backdrop is looking to see which layout it should use for each page, it checks to see is this a dashboard? Nope. Is this the home page? Nope. Is this an, uh, a node? Is it a node page? Yes, it is a node page. Then it's also going to check is it of type animals? If it is, yep. If the question answer to that is yep, then it's going to use this, this layout. If it's not type animals, it'll go back down to default and it will use the default layout. Okay, let's jump back in here to manage the blocks on this page and see once we have done this, um, we have uh, suddenly unleashed uh, a really powerful feature, which I, can, I think is kind of hidden, which is the ability to add field blocks. So, um, really quick refresher for those of you who, if you're not familiar with how Backdrop uh, has content types. In Backdrop, you can have different types of content. Uh, actually, let's do that over here. So we have three types of uh, content on, in this particular site, animals, pages, and posts. And uh, one of the powerful things about Backdrop is you can create your own content types with your own fields. So for example, under animals, if we hit configure, uh, and we go to manage fields, uh, a piece of content about animals has a title, a body, tags, and a photo, or an image. Uh, we could also add a species, or a habitat, or a country uh, field, and, uh, and, and they would be part of, of that content. Well, with, with layouts, with layouts, if we go to the, de let's just do this quick, if we go to the default layout, and we go to add a block, I'm going to type in um, tags. There's no tags block available for me, or I'm going to type in uh, image. I think that's what it was called. There's no image block, even body. There's no body block, okay? But if I go back to layouts, and then I go, uh, and now I go to the animals uh, layout, because this is a node layout, I can come down here into the content and I can hit add a block. And if I type body, oops, if I type it correctly, there I have a field body block. I can click on that and say, do I want to use the field label? I'm going to say no. Uh, I'm not going to do much else. And now what I've done is added a, a, the body field from my, uh, from my content type into the, this content region. Uh, if I do that, the body is also in the main page content. And, well, let's just go ahead. And, actually, I'm going to do one or two other things. I'm going to move the page title into the content region, and I'm going to add one more block. I'm going to add, um, is it tags? Yep, field animal tags. Uh, again, no label. Well, we'll leave the label. Use field label is for now. Go ahead and save. And now I'm going to save this. And we're going to go back, I guess, the quickest way. Boom. So we have this left-hand column. There are no tags, so nothing is showing up on this side. Let's edit our, our, our node quickly and add uh, giraffes. Let's add uh, tall as a tag for giraffes. And we can add mammals. Uh, we're doing just putting a comma between them. We can add more than one. Uh, if there's existing, well, we'll see this in a bit. If there's existing uh, tags, they will show up and let you pick from them. But we're adding our first tag. So there again. So now my tags are showing up over here. There's the page title. We've got one problem, though. 
and that is that the body field is showing up twice. And that's because it's showing up uh, as part of the regular content, and then we've added it separately. Okay, so what we need to do is go down to the layout for animals. And what we want to do is get rid of the main page content, because the main page content has the, well, it has all of the fields, actually. Let's go back quick and, and, and see that. Once we added those tags, those tags are also showing up over here. The, the link is showing up here. These are all different fields in the animal content type, and they're all showing up in the main body or the, in, in the content block. And since we want to break it, have individual control over individual fields, we want to get rid of uh, this main page content block. Remove that. Okay. So now we have the page title, we have those tabs, those are just administrative things like the edit tab, they won't show up for regular users, and we have the body. And, um, okay, let's go back to the, take a look at this, actually, did we, did we save the layout already? Giraffe page, now we have the tags over here, we have giraffe, we have our body fields, uh, we've lost our image altogether. Well, the image was at the top of the page. Let's say we want that at the bottom. We can go back to our layout animals uh, here in the block. We can say, um, I forget, I think it was image, field image. Uh, we don't need any kind of label on this, um, none. What format do we want to display the, uh, the image in? Uh, a rendered file? Uh, Let's take a look at that. Well, I think what we want to do is show the image, and then we have different image styles by default with backdrop. So we can show a medium, small, or large image. Uh, actually, this is kind of interesting because let's do a large one here. We don't need to link that to anything. Save. And uh, just for fun, let's put a thumbnail over here. Uh, we want an image, we want no label, for image style, we want a thumbnail, boom. LinkedIn uh, float, nothing, okay. Save this, go back to the giraffes page. Boom, so here now in the left column we've got a, a small thumbnail of the giraffe, and down here we have a large image. So this gives us a lot of power to take and move individual pieces of this uh, giraffe or, or this animal content type and display it in different ways we want. We could imagine uh, going to our uh, layouts page, excuse me, uh, going to the animals layout and, and under configure the layout we could do a three column. Instead of using Moscone with the left column we could do uh, a column on the, the right and the left. Let's use Harris. We hit save. So now we've got two columns, and we could move, uh, I don't know, the page title uh, and <laughs> this image over here. And now hit save. Boom. We've got a column of content over here. We've got the body in the middle. Uh, let's do this really quick and look at this in a different browser. There we go. This is what it looks like when we're not logged in as an admin. We don't have those, those tabs. So I think this is a good introduction to the power of, of layouts. Um, I think we're going to stop just about here. I want to go back really quickly and look at, again, uh, this is under structure, layouts. And uh, within when you add a layout, again, you have the ability to pick to name a layout, um, test, pick any of these, uh, to set a path. This so this path could be, you know, my page. We would, if we had a, uh, if we had a node with that path, my page, we could create a layout for just this individual page, and we wouldn't have to add any individual condi individual uh, visibility conditions, but we could. Okay, I think that is all we're we're going to cover in this video. Um, please uh, post comments uh, or questions in, on YouTube or uh, contact me at uh, uh, simplo.site 
uh, we have a contact form. You can uh, reach me here and either request additional videos in the future or ask questions. I uh, would love to help you out. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Bye.